Oh yeah, I'll look at them. Beautiful graphics. Oh my gosh, why is it being so chuggy? One sec. Let's give it a second here. Catch up. Hey everyone, how's it going? Happy, what day is it? It's the 20th, which is Saturday. Cool, so that video is coming out later today. Cool, so we're taking a look at the F-18 first off. Yes, hello, hello. Great to see wonderful people here today. Sorry, I don't know why it's so chuggy right now. Let's give it a second to catch up. So if you haven't seen it already, this is the new um, F-18, I believe, E variant. Feel like I should know it now after making a whole video about everything. But yeah, so here we are again, an F-18 back in flight sim. It's been a hot minute. Today, of course, you can see you're flying out of Toronto. Um, the photogrammetry is being a little bit weird. After me saying it looks great in the video, but alas, you will all have to wait for that tonight. Um, quick run through the Hornet. Um, spoilers for today's video is that, yes, they do have some main systems that work now. Um, so you can go through the tactical and support page. Of course, most things don't work as usual. But horizontal situation indicator works. If we go to engine that works. Look at that. So many cool little things. We'll do external. Just show off that. Yeah, you do still have everything else working nice and shiny. I addressed it in the uh, video, but Flight Sim is the only one that still has issues with my setup. FSX works. Dang. Ah, Flight Sim being Flight Sim, it's all good. There we go. Of course, now it works. Yeah, um, Flight Sim 2020 is the only game I have where it starts to get a little bit finicky. It might be because I had a weird startup here, but for some reason, it doesn't really recognize my full Hotas system. So my stick and everything else works, but not the uh, thrust sometimes. So the flaps work. There we go, so now it's working, but for some reason it's giving full thrust. Okay, screw it, we'll just play with it. We'll see how it goes. Um, I mentioned in the video that yes, they do have the uh, E-bracket in the sim now for the F-18. Which can't really see because of the HUD, but oh well. Gear up, there you go. Yeah, I can kind of see the E-bracket there, which is kind of cool. Ah, so it does indeed work. Do some low speed takeoff here to just show off. Whoa, look at that. What the? I might have to restart the sim because this is being a little bit weird. Oh, that's part of the satellite image. Okay. Um, never mind. That's kind of weird. Um, apparently they fixed Toronto Center, but I'm not seeing that anymore. I feel bad now because I just did a video saying, yeah, it looks better, but that is actually kind of funny how bad that is okay so yeah we'll just take a few low passes of toronto today we'll just show you around see if anything has changed with the sim uh we'll just uh finish our turn here so yeah um again it's it's a hornet what what can you really say you know you can't complain about ha finally having a fast mover in um with that being said i say it many times in the upcoming video if you really do want the jet experience just get dcs the uh the F-18 module is obviously way better than uh, coming into here. But yeah, so uh, the low frame rate. Yeah, sorry about that today. Beautiful, beautiful explosions. Okay, so now that I got that out of the way. Let's 
take a quick look at things. Let's see if it actually loads properly this time. <laughs> nice. All right. So there we go. We got the hornet in the background. So let's go world map. Uh, let's make sure it's off. Good. We don't want to interrupt anyone today beautiful so yeah so we do go over it in the video but of course we got the uh, new f18 we have the pit special we got the uh, tricycle nx cub rocking and rolling now we also have three different variants well four of the pc6 oh heck let's just take it out uh pretty much a cargo version passenger version you got a ski version and you got the floats version uh you also have where is it here your little vertical I still haven't fixed that, which I'm kind of disappointed in that, but whatever. Um, and of course, three different liveries. We'll stick with the standard. We'll give it a little bit more gas just to play around. Let's play around with full load here. See how she handles. All right. So there we go. We got that rocking and rolling. We are going to just, let's take off from 33 over at Buttonville. Let's see how that works got some coffee here today if you're in the chat hello everyone have a wonderful day if you're watching on the vod hope you have a wonderful day as well me i'm just here drinking my coffee coffee always is a wonderful thing to have on hand see how the pc6 handles on stream you can go anywhere in the world yeah yeah, that video is coming up later tonight at around 7 p.m. Eastern, I believe. And around three or four hours from now, it's got some extra time. So, hey, why not put a little bit of extra time into some, some stuff. So, here we are, good old PC6. I don't know why the sim is being weird today, but... Just having a few issues loading in everything right after I make the video, of course. So, yeah. So, the... Uh, let's see. Yeah, it works. Okay. So, obviously, this is the good old cargo variant. And with the cargo variant, you also have the good old steam gauge uh, system as well, of course. So, you do have... Let's make sure that still works. Yes, that does. And, of course, my prop works as well. Perfect. All right. Again, I love the air. Many, many people love this aircraft. Again, one of the key features when plane spotting this guy is the vertical stab. Basically, they just took a horizontal stabilizer and copy and pasted it, pretty much. And they built the plane. All right, so yeah, let's take it out. Let's, uh, come on. Sim is being very naughty today. All right. Hurry me. Yeah, it feels a little bit weird. I don't know, that's the one thing I have tail uh, trigger aircraft in the sim is that they feel a little bit too responsive when on the roll. Like, even right now, I could just go, like, full right. Let's see, yeah, okay, let's just get this guy off the ground here. Yeah, Bunville's a little nice uh, airport to take, uh off in IRL, it is starting to get a little bit bumpy on some taxiways. I think there's one, I forgot which one it is that's closed. Yeah, I don't really know what's going on with the uh, shading system in there. Now, let's take a quick look externally. <laughs> yeah. Flying low and slow, yes. Yeah, I don't know if the sim updated. Well, we weren't looking or what, but yeah, it's definitely acting uh, a little weird today. So yeah, we'll just get that RPN back here. A little bit early, heading towards the entire here. Got a little bit of light bloom.
There you go. Beautiful day. Ah, beautiful when you can stay all nice and cozy and warm. Alrighty, so yeah, let's head on down south here. Um, IRL, it's 2,000 feet here, so pretty much 1,900. You head down south, you don't have to make contact with the terminal. There you go. Throttle on back a bit now. See if this works a bit here. Yeah, come on. There we go. Sim being a little bit weird. Yeah, pretty much if you just follow like the 401 and everything else, because the 404 is behind us. So 4-4 four four is pretty much just over there. Got somebody else flying out of here too. That's kind of cool. And yeah, pretty much just head south. And then you get over the 401 and Leslie checkpoint. It's always kind of weird when you just see one seat in the front. Like, I know, especially for bush shops, they have that, but... It's always funny just kind of seeing it. There you go. And 2,000. Beauty! Go take a look and see how Toronto looks from the air. Pretty much... Tagged out 2,000 here. Actually... Boop, 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 boop. Let's see if I can show you on the map here. I can't remember if they have... Oh. Why can't the map come up? Unless if they change the key binding. It should be just M. That's what I'm pressing. For some reason that just doesn't want to work. Okay. Yeah, so pretty much right here is the checkpoint. So you can pretty much just fly down south. Yeah, it's weird. The uh, key binding's acting a little bit weird today. Okay. It's all good. Nobody I can fly. Interesting. Okay. Enough playing around. Let's get old reflections off the ground here. Nice. I mean like no matter what, the sim looks amazing. You gotta you gotta give it to that. Even on lower end computers it does an okay job. They still have a lot of optimization to do, definitely, but Overall, can't complain. We're living in the future. <laughs> Although, yeah, Google Google did it first. Nice little slow moving around. Toronto is such a green city. Wow. Oh boy, it's so green. And back up to 2,000, slowly but surely, get that speed down a little bit. Yeah, from here it's a little bit 
I mean, like, it really depends. Like, there's no consistency when it comes to photogrammetry. Like, you literally load in, and some days it looks great, and days like today, it's just all pixels. Like, it looks better now. I guess it's just the rendering engine for sure. I believe I can fly. Derping around all the time. Oh, I gotta get up in the 150 and get some sand tower time for real. <laughs> just get just get the plane full of photographers and just make your money back. Pays for gas. Yeah, I don't know. I, I have, Some of the shortcuts are being a little bit weird for me. I mean, like, you can see the museum and everything. Obviously, that's... Yeah. Let's just say you can tell you're in a game. <laughs> yeah. I can't wait for them to release, like, an official... Uh, Clean up for sure. Now let's follow northbound. Yeah, unfortunately, um, Buttonville in real life a few years ago lost its tower. Now Canada took it out, so they still have an MF. So everyone has to be on radio or pre-planned, uh, which is nice. But yeah, kind of sucks. We still have an ATIS, but it's like, quote-unquote, un unofficial. So you're technically not supposed to use it for flight planning and everything. It's not, not like a NAV Canada sanctioned ATIS. It's more like an AWOS, but it still works. It's just that it's, quote-unquote, unmonitored by Transport Canada now. And we also got trapped to our uh, 1130 low. Actually, I wonder if... Oh, we can't. Okay. I was about to say, is that a human player or is this... One second. No, oh, no, it's not. I remember I had everything uh, turned off. Yeah, normally I play with uh, live weather and everything, but today we're like, ah... Uh, I don't want to interfere with anyone. I don't want to be that guy. So let's just overtake this AI. Oh, gassy. Now we'll land and hop back in the Hornet, and then we'll uh, try the heli, and that should be it. What, what did the sim spawn here? It looks like a little 172 or something. It's kind of cool. Or it could be a 20. Where'd it go? You are a little bit low, my friend. <laughs> I don't really know what the sim's doing, but hey, whatever. Let's go direct in here. Uh. Barrel, barrel. Barrel, barrel. How many degrees of flaps? Is that full 40? Uh, 38 degrees, close enough. Still a lot of flappage for a uh, smaller aircraft. But again, I think I think the PC6 is definitely your turbo prop, right? Because I had to deal a lot of PC12s up north when I worked up there. PC24, beautiful jet, by the way. Had to look after that too because uh, Pilatus too does their uh, cold weather testing in a Cowlitz. So that was mighty fun. Honestly, I think I'm landing with Tailwind, but you know what? You need the practice in a sim, you know? 
It's always kind of funny when people complain online. It's like, you're not doing something right. It's like, dude, it's a sim. Have fun. That's what sims are for, games. They're meant for fun and doing stupid stuff. Uh, I'm on my game where I can fly. I want to get time on a uh, real tail Traeger. That'll be fun. I mean, like, all my hour hours are all uh, tricycle, whether it's a 40 or 172. So it'll be kind of cool to get some real hours here. Do, 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 do. Do, 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 do. Boop. Nice little boopy landing. I know I have like a lot of nitpicks. It'd be kind of cool if they actually get proper Canadian airport runway markings. Because like a lot of people don't know. You can kind of see them through here. Where it's kind of like a fat, chunky line. That's how Canadian runways are. We have like many small little lines instead of like an American one big line. Which is kind of cool because like they could teach the AI how to do that. Right? Am I right? Yeah, I'm right. Okay. So that's a PC6. Let's go have a look at the Hornet again. Pretend to take it seriously. No. I don't think it's enough to land, but we can try to land on Toronto Center. Jeez, you can tell when I have a Canadian keyboard when it's like a shap. <laughs> Bing. Uh, let's... I'm going to easily take off from... Here he is in the Hornet. I'm excited to see all the different uh, Hornet liveries that the community is going to make because again as usual they kind of only release the one skin with the two extras oh hey physics <laughs> i don't know do you remember me <laughs> get a question mark <laughs> yeah it's been a while eh i'm just booping around hanging around i hope i, I hope you're doing safe and wonderful me, I'm just being a dork and uh, playing around. Doing stupid things in Flight Sim, so the same old. Yeah! Now the question is, do you remember me for a good reason or because it was just such a bad time last time, you know? We're causing so much trouble. I'm just kidding. It's good to see ya. I can't remember. Did you ever get flight sim or anything at all? Yeah. Um. I have a video about everything coming out tonight at 7 p.m. Eastern. But oh my god, flight sim! Of course, the map comes up now when I don't want it to. Um. But I was just like, hey, I have a few minutes. Why not play around? So yeah. Um. I was just testing the Hornet. As usual, I have stupidly high standards because I come from DCS, so everything's modeled, everything else. Um, regarding this compared to the Flight Sim X or 10, whatever you want to call it, Hornet, it's way better in the sense that you'll see in the video, but it actually does have the tactical as well as the support pages. You do have like your standard engine pages, everything else. The glare of Doom, oh my god. And of course, your autopilot and everything else works as well. So I can set that. And the, and the cool thing is now, you can actually set your bingo fuel. <laughs> I know it's like only a few lines of code to do this, but it's uh, it's really cool to have that little extra feature for a non-combat sim. So yeah, you have most of the buttons and stuff working, but obviously FLIR and everything else doesn't work here. Internal lighting panel, all that stuff works. ECS, some of the stuff works. Electronics, all work. Basically, all the standard light systems you need to fly work. Everything else is just an op. But, we do have a wonderful uh, surprise for you. There you go. 
is that the burners, yes, they do work. And the lighting, I'll show you in a second. Um, the lighting system that they have going on looks great for the Hornet at night. Uh, one second here. Again, kudos to technology actually working. Come on, you can. Uh, let's just say that. <laughs> I love how that's just like totally, you can just click and drag now and change the lighting system. But yeah, like the, the flare and F thing looks amazing. And again, I know a lot of people criticize me saying, oh, stop complaining about flight sim. It's, it, it's am it, it is amazing. It looks fantastic. It's amazing technology. I'm just annoying because I'm always asking about, oh, what about the IFR stuff? And what about all that? Again, sim looks freaking amazing. It's beautiful. Uh, the cool thing is, too, is that I fly out of Collingwood and I've been working on my night rating IRL. Um, and they've started to add, like, wind turbines and, and stuff into the sim actually working where they're supposed to be. So it's really cool to see all the red lights of like wind farms and stuff. Um, actually, and the cool thing is too, sorry, I'm a real nerd when it comes to this stuff. They actually added in the E bracket, um, which is, I'm not sure if you know what the E bracket is. It's basically a landing tool that they have on the uh, IRL Hornet. That I'll show you in a second here. I'll just, uh, the sim might have gotten my, oh, there we go. We'll just do some stupid. And the cool thing with the E variant is that it has its little uh, cowling flap here. So, like, when you turn, yeah, you can kind of see it. You have, like, a little elevator that comes up. So, on the E, the elephant variant of the Hornet, it's really, really cool. So, anyways, what was I saying? E bracket. Uh, where's the runway here? Obviously, stock, they don't have any... Uh, vertices or anything but once we get below 250 knots i can show you um i'm starting my ifr well i was supposed to start my ifr two weeks ago but the weather where i live has been really horrible <laughs> so i just haven't been able to fly because it's it's literally just been all icing um it sucks a lot but you know what it's all good. I also had my first IRL emergency. My alternator died on my uh, night cross country solo, which was kind of hilarious to do. There's a video about that, but you missed a lot, man. Where were you? I'm just kidding. Um, yeah, the E bracket, the little thing on the left there, it basically shows the attitude of the Hornet because the Hornet, obviously, since it was made to land on a carrier, it was made to land hard. So it's so cool. Yeah, I know. Stop it, Betty. I'm trying to get low. Okay, there we go. Come on. You can do it. There we go. <laughs> That's how you land the water horn. Um, but if I go back to the map here, one second. Yeah, the weather has been meh. I mean, yeah. Oh, nice. Cool. Yeah. I forgot you were working on your CPL as well. Yeah. The weather has been horrible. Um, what was I going to do? I was going to do one more thing for the VOD and I might take a break. Yeah. Honestly, hopefully we get better weather soon because um, the last time I flew was before, just before all this crazy weather came in. And we had, it was nice. We had a high pressure system over us. So it was like awesome weather. It was beautiful. And then, of course, like a few low pressure systems came in. And it's just like, oh, well, looks like we aren't going to have any good weather now for a while. Which sucks. Yeah, it's hard. Because, like, in Ontario, as, as soon as, like, you get that first front of weather, instantly there's, like, a few weeks that you know you aren't going to be able to fly. And then, of course, that's when, like, your shit gets expired and then you have to, like, do your... <sighs> Flying costs a lot of money. That's why I prefer to crash and do everything in flight sim and do stupid stuff. It's great. 
I mean, like, I hope you've been doing well. Like, obviously, you haven't been flying recently because of the weather, but I'm happy that you're almost on your CPL. That's pretty freaking cool. Um... Oh, again, I've I've just been trying to get my night rating done. Again, it's been a real pain in the butt. Like I said, it's just the weather and everything. As soon as that's done, um, it's pretty much on to doing my IFR. Right, yeah, I know. Which I don't mind because I passed the dispatcher exams like two years ago. Like I have the knowledge base of like how to plan an instrument approach and stuff it's basically just flying it which is awesome like it's i'm really excited so like the the, the dispatcher stuff definitely helped out with a knowledge base um i'm just interested to fly an actual like i don't know ILS approach or an iron ab or something and yeah money is to, <laughs> again i'm rather I also had, um, I got block time on a 150 flying out of Buttonville. Buttonville's a great airport. It's just a lot of the runways and taxiways are kind of, I don't want to say they're not well maintained. They're just starting to get a little bit old, right? Because for a while there, Buttonville was possibly going to shut down, but that's been kind of put on hold. Um, so obviously they don't have a tower anymore. It's an MF, which is still nice. But, yeah, the other uh, day I actually blew a tire, a nose wheel tire, from the uh, runway there. Um, I took off, landed at Lake Simcoe. And when I landed, the tire was... <laughs> the t okay, I, I totally did not blow the tire. I did not do it. Nah, it happens. It was an older... It was fine. Luckily, I know the uh, airport manager at Lexemco. So we, but we still had to push the aircraft like two kilometers <laughs> on the uh, taxiway because the tractor couldn't pull it because the nose wheel had the, uh, the aircraft had wheel, boot, whoop, eh, wheel boots on. So it's nice to have that extra like three or four knots. But you can't tow it because the wheel boots. So we had to push it two kilometers. Okay, so this is cool. I just wanted to see if the buildings were actually physical objects in the sim, and they are. <laughs> so, Mythbusters 101. The buildings are real objects. No, it's, it's great. Because it's kind of cool, because this, obviously, it's not a helicopter in the sense. They don't have the proper physics in the engine yet. So, no matter how hard you try, you can't get a vortex stall. But it's kind of cool to see that they've added collision on the top of the building so you can actually land on them so that's kind of cool that'll kill physics <laughs> honestly like your name is actually perfect for like a pilot youtube i'm just saying physics honestly it is like um besides like dispatching my job is flying drones I own a small business where we do aerial photography and we're Transport Canada compliant and stuff. Literally, it, it literally is one big drone. And the uh, the IRL story behind it is that this is the air taxi that Uber and them are going to buy. And it's pretty much a flying Tesla. So it's not going to have their control stick and stuff. This is just the test bed version. But the real one is going to be like a two-person air taxi that just flies you around. So if you want to get Tim Hortons, that's that's all it is. Also, it's the first aircraft in flight sim for Microsoft. That is electric. Yes, it says fuel, but it's actually have a... As you can probably tell, it is a battery-driven... I call, I call it a drone in the freaking video from tonight. And it really is. That's all it is. It's like 12 or whatever electric motors actually freaking hilarious um yeah they haven't fixed anything in regards to what the heck man it's been so long since i've been out in toronto irl i'm just like wait where's the garner that's the sky dome yeah the um you can tell that they're using this as a test bed for helicopters because it's not really a helicopter in the sense that 
like I said before, the physics aren't really there yet. But if I pull, if I pull, God, if I push full forward, it's not going to act like a helicopter. This is me pushing full forward. And you can see that it starts to red itself because it has a quote unquote max speed that it can really go. So you can't really control it. Like literally it's just flying a easy drone. It's just forward, back, up and down. There's no real helicopter or collective, obviously. It's just blades of doom. Mind you, I wanna I wanna see what happens if you drop a watermelon on this. <laughs> like that's how you get a smoothie. Right away. Like you just drop a few watermelons, drop a few pears or something. I don't know. You will get a beautiful cocktail of awesome tasting stuff. Oh, I don't know. Yeah, um, I'll do one more aircraft before I head out. We'll make it a heavy metal aircraft. I don't know. I'll do the, um, let me know if you want me to fly the, the RJ. I have the 700 or 500. Or I have the cool A320 Neo that's third party and is actually good. <laughs> I'm sorry, that sounds mean, but I still have problems with the uh, vanilla autopilot for the Neo that they have in the sim. Uh, basically what I'm talking about is we have the fly-by-wire sim with the leap engines. That's a cool thing with Air Canada too. Uh... Hey, this is what I fly. Except it's not the NG version. I fly the XLS IRL. It's beautiful. Yeah, um, in the sim, they do have a few things that they still have to fix for the 40s. But they also have a tricycle cub now, which is cool. And, of course, the RJs. They've updated these two a lot. Like, it's, it's really nice. One second. Oh, I don't want to have to go on the... Do I want to? No, I'm not going to do it. I am not going to do it. I'm just going to wait for that text on what you want me to end on. Um, Again, like the liveries are nice with the stock version because the liveries that everyone have been making. Oh, the tricycle? One sec. Uh, The Cub, they have a tricycle... It's nice. Like it's it's there's no difference really. Like it's it's literally the, the same airframe or everything else. They just instead of having um tail dragger, they just have a gear in the front. It is weird. I will say that right now, the first time like I was flying around with it. One sec, I'll show you. <laughs> um It's kind of funny. One of my uh friends Oh well, I was um, I, I, again, I only have one more flight to do and I have it. It's just this freaking weather. Um, we fly out of Collingwood and they were going down to uh, Toronto Center. Yeah, Billy Bishop, because there's a certain time where after hours you don't pay a stupid amount of money in landing fees. Um, but because of COVID, especially like when the COVID first... Oh, gosh dang, and now this money's... This video is going to be demonetized because I said COVID, but whatever. Um, literally, they could just get vectored over Pearson. And just like do a low and over because there's no traffic, right? Um, so yeah, again, it's it's literally just... It's a cup with... Like, it's weird. I mean, like, it is so against, like your inner thoughts saying this should not be a thing but it is and i checked and like if you have a few like 100 grand then yeah you can buy a new one at least choose tricycle if you want but it's like holy geez that's and i'm not i can't remember if the other ones do but it does have a prop as well well obviously it has a prop but you can play around with the rpm here um which is nice i just wish that they added the uh it's nice having a FADEC for the 40s, but I just wish they had a 40 that didn't have FADEC on so I could actually use it for, like, some kind of training. Because not everyone has the money to buy a FADEC for a 40, even if all the new ones <laughs> are just FADEC. 
Yeah, so it's weird. Again, it's just a cub, but with tricycle gear. That's that's the only difference. I guess that the company asked them to put it in because it's like it's free advertising, like the icon. Or maybe it was requested because it's easier to land a tricycle. I don't really know. Maybe that's a thing. Maybe it's not. I don't know. But if I had money, I'd probably not buy this for 200 grand. I'd probably just buy a used 182 or something <laughs> and actually have cargo room. Um, yeah, I don't know. I do want to jump in the Airbus for a second. Because I just wanted to double check to see if it would work with a SID. Oh, it's nighttime. That's I was like, why is the satellite so weird? Um, I just want to test on stream if the SIDs and stars are going to work with... Where is it? It's always fun flying the 62. We had a 62 come in the other day at Collingwood. Beautiful freaking plane. I mean, oh... Oh man, it was great. Uh, Leap only really needs 30% around there to get to. See, that's the other thing too, is that being a dispatcher is just like, you have all these experiences where it's like, do you realize every time an airplane, an airplane like an Airbus or whatever flies, they never take full gas. Like they only take what they need. Um, Or whatever the dispatcher says they need. I wish they had a better dispatching app here. I wish they had better failures app. I have a giant wish list for flight sim, as you can tell. Um, oh yeah, it's a 66 more than enough. More than enough to get to Toronto with reserves. It is nice how they have a better high level airway. Um, I think it's the, you're taking off. I think this is the proper, one second. It's been so, yeah, that's the proper one. And I think it's Boxum. Alright, can I see what the weather is? Yeah, they're going to be using 2-4. 2-4 right is what they usually use. And it'll be 2-4 right. Oh, yeah. They, they're they adding, a, in real life, they're adding a RNP approach to 2-3, I believe. Which is kind of cool. Ah, yeah. Actually, the Dreamliner is great for... Okay, as I have no idea what it's doing on with the star here. Like, is it just me? Wait, let me just try... It might be Nuber. can't remember which one it is. Nope, that's coming from Buffalo. I don't want to bring up four flights just for this. This is silly. Okay. That is coming. Yeah, I was right. It is Boxum. It just it's being really weird the way this program treats SIDs and stars. Because again, like this is what's breaking the system is this point here. Because every time that it does it, the sim breaks because as soon as you get here, the sim doesn't know what it wants to do. So, like, obviously, this is a lot... Oh, I'm sorry, I'm complaining. I'm just going to do it, and I'll show it. Grumble, grumble. Because I got it I got it to work with the 747. <laughs> Actually, the Dreamliner is really good for fuel consumption like i've flown in the cockpit for um the dispatch stuff and it's insane how well <laughs> those things are for fuel consumption it's an, it's amazing i mean like if you if you want a private jet that's that's what you get like it's insane Okay, no, I'll admit, I'm used to, like, the Boeing way of, like, I prefer Airbus, personally. That's my personal choice. Um, But Boeing makes it nice and easy for, like, a car system and everything else. One sec. 
FMS. Your flight management systems are go. Yeah, it's funny. Um, I have to go take exams for dispatch again because mine expired. So when I get called back to work, I have to retake them. But of course, Ontario, because of COVID, everything's booked at least to mid-January. So since I still have my flight benefits from work, I can just go to Atlantic region and take my uh, exams on the 1st of December, which is great. Um, Not really. Like, it's kind of the same as... There's only two exams. It's just a med exam and ever and everything else exam so in the met it's fairly easy it's kind of like it's basically the cpl exam but more about like flight planning so it's like weather is just like flight planning weather you, you could probably take it no no issue um the silly part is that with the everything else exam they have things like etops and stuff so extended twin engine operation questions which a lot of operators in Canada don't need because you're not flying over water with like a PC-12 or something. <laughs> so it's like, oh, okay. And it only has one engine, but it's like for other operators. Yeah. Like the operator I applied for right now in my old workplace, it makes sense to have ETOPS qualifications and going through all that paperwork. But it's like, there's no real schools for it it's basically kind of like an underground ground school course like you can find them but again between my cpl and having friends that are dispatchers it makes life so much easier and if you have questions you can just ask them but very often it is common sense like again it has icing questions it's like are you gonna fly with a contaminated aircraft no i am not uh where is my plane Where is my plane? Oh, jeez, it's my stealth. <laughs> it's one of them fancy new stealth planes, huh? It's the Wonder Woman jet. Yeah, okay, this is not supposed to be how it's like. Uh, I think the sim broke. Gosh, dang it. That sucks. Yeah, believe it or not, like, not what it is. Like, it's really well worded. Like, they try to trick you. So it's just like, oh, if you decontaminate, like, the fuselage, or if you do this, or it's like, as long as you feel confident to fly. And it's like, yeah, if there's ice on the plane, it's like the no contamination concept, right? Like, if there is ice on a plane, don't fly. So that sucks that this broke because it is such a great piece of freeware that I have to freaking well at least we can use an Air Canada thing I don't know again it's probably going to break but whatever I just want to see if the Sitter Star is going to work today then I'm going to go and drink hot chocolate oh my gosh this used to be my job like literally sitting and planning flights on IFR Except it was a lot easier because she pushed a button and it does it for you. <laughs> you don't have to know freaking grumble grumble departures. Stamp six. Mind you, the flight sim, you don't have to worry about notams and stuff, so it's nice. Um, what did I say? Oh, yeah, two four right. Sorry. No! I want two four right for box and five. We want the approach four two four right <gasps> third and one and let's see if this works yeah thanks again for sticking around and hanging out like it's nice just to hang out it's a beautiful day out. definitely not me trying to be scottish the pure power I love how they have to have a trademark over Sharklet. <laughs> it 
it's always great when you take friends and family flying and they just ask questions and it's like you know the giant th and they talk about hey how does like a plane fly and stuff like how it's magic and you're like yes it is. nice little livery here it's like yes it is indeed magic this is how it flies it is okay again i'm used to the boeing system so it's probably me it's probably just user error that's being a nugget because like literally everything's already loaded in the system Perf's already complete, so you already have your v, V1, your rotation, and your V2. It already has your max speeds, everything else. Next phase. Cost index 100, sure. Managed. Next. Next. Yes, that is correct. Don't have to worry about that. Yeah, okay, so that, that sh that's all in the system. It's just this point here. See where it says D0? This is a broke end D1. These two points, I have no idea where this is coming from, but it it's the thing that breaks the sim. Because if you come in here, for the Airbus anyways, because if you come on... Freaking not working. I I'll fly the approach in a sec, because everything's all managed right now. So as soon as I press autopilot, auto throttle, everything else, flight director's on it. The plane should technically fly itself. But let's see what happens. It's rather this is being weird or I'm just stupid with Airbuses, but. And of course, flight sim broke my thing. Oh, there you go. Again, flight sim being the only flaps one should be good. Come on. There you go. Okay. You know when you're a nerd when <laughs> you're talking about like flaps one should be fine. Yeah, um a funny joke I always say is when people ask, Oh hey, how does the airplane fly? Like you answer, Oh, it's all magic, but the big spinny thing in front of the plane keeps the pilot nice and cool. It's the oh that's what it's really for. Uh, I'm such a I have all the dad jokes ready, I'm not I'm not even a dad. It's pretty bad actually. How you get the ladies. I'm just kidding. Um, so I just want to see if this is going to work. Because with the Airbus, it should be quote-unquote simple. We'll gear up, etc. Yeah, I know, the big spinny thing. I actually have a story about the big spinny thing in a sec here. I just want to see if this is going to work. Auto throttle's on. Autopilot set. And as you saw, it's loaded with... I just want to see if this is actually going to follow the proper flight plan. Because this is all set. Flaps should be coming up. Oh, please work. Oh, shush. Yes, I would like my pizza. Okay, so for some reason it's not working because the thrust auto throttle is on, but it's going over speed. And look, I, I'm not even touching anything. It's just yawing to the left. I have no idea what's happening because nav's on. Autopilot, I have no idea what the autopilot's doing because I have to take control. Come on. And everything is unmanaged. Like, you saw that, right? So the flight plan is loaded. I'll do a direct two in a second, but this is the stock. I will fly towards the waypoint, like, for the uh, SID. So we have our dots on here. So, again, I'm just going to put everything to make sure that it is managed. So again, this is like if you were doing manually, but this is the FMS taking control. I'm going to put on auto throttle again. And put it. And then put on autopilot. Technically, you should be able to put both autopilots on, but whatever. Yeah, it just goes into a descent to the left.
Like, unless if it's ignoring, like... But it's in a... I don't know why it's doing a descent. Like... This is weird. Like, all the other autopilots in the game work. Like, the diamonds, the 747. I just don't know if I'm doing something weird. So I'm just going to pause it for a second. Just do a direct two. Um... I think Robux should be out of it. Because again, it's always these two D points where it technically doesn't exist. So let's just try going direct to that point. I'll unpause the sim and see if that does anything. So we're heading directly to that point now. Everything's on managed. Autopilot's on. But it's still in like, it's going into like a spiral dive. I'm not crazy, right? Like everything is indicating that. Okay, I'm gonna get it out before the plane crashes, but it's only with the Airbus on this. I have no idea. Yeah, so I'm not going crazy, right? Like, I don't understand why it's not working. Because both the Dreamliner and the 747 work fine. Because the way that the autopilot works with the Airbus, obviously, I don't do this IRL, like, freaking. I'm not here to say that I'm an Airbus pilot, but pretty much the two modes are managed and pilot managed. So. This is obviously pilot managed, right? Because you can like choose things. But when it's pressed up, the FMS and like the little dot above the uh, altitude, like these two dots mean the FMS. Yeah, that's what I'm thinking. Which is why I wanted to try the third party Airbus just to see if it was like some weird thing with because it might also be the Canadian Sits and Stars. Because if I go direct with Rabox, one second. Sorry, this is just me being like a giant nerd and trying to solve this. If we go direct to Rabox. What if I erase these two points? No, no. What if I erase this point? And this point. Oh, wait, no, that's just leading that so we're going direct to Rabox autopilot on we'll just see if this fixes it and if not I give up because like everything up here says for some reason it's descending cool Again, I'm not touching anything right now. Now it's going like completely yaw right. Yeah, I think it's a Sid and Star messing up the uh, the game. That's that's my. Thought. Okay. Come on. There we go. So pilot input works, just not FMS. I don't know. If anyone knows on the VOD, so people watching later on, leave a comment. Because I don't know. I, I, I can't do anything with that <laughs> i don't know it's kind of sad because i love airbus i just can't i uh, get it to work everything else works fine like the 40s everything else is fine but alas i will end today with the 40 because it's my cream and butter and sugar and whatever you want to call it i don't know like even a bombardier works but <laughs> I don't want to sound mean. It's like, even the Bombardier works. What the hell? 
I'm gonna fly my beauty. Um, I'm not sure if you heard, but they have a new electric Diamond DA40 coming out, and it's really cool. Um, it has like an hour and a half flight time, so it's more meant for flight schools. So you can stay like in the circuit and just do circuits for like 90 minutes. And then just charge up afterwards. So it's going to save flight school so much money because that's like 90% of their flying is in the circuit. So it's going to be amazing. Yeah, uh, an electric DA-40. Um, it's if you, if literally if you just Google it, it's freaking amazing. Um, Because I wouldn't trust it on cross countries yet, but hydrogen and electric power overall are going to be huge in aviation in the next 10 years. When you and I are going to be flying, um, I think we're going to be witnessing like the transition, which is going to be really cool. Like at first it's going to be a little bit nerve wracking because it's like, what if there's like, <laughs> what if somebody accidentally says control alt delete or something like Yeah, I know. For circuits, it'll be so much cheaper to rent to. Um, again, like it feels weird because flight sim, as much as I say uh, I have a few problems with it, they do do a good job with the VFR stuff. Like for my VFR night rating, it's kind of cool to see this. But yes, it is a lot lighter in the sim. Like in real life, you can't you can barely see like the numbers and stuff. I think you you know what I'm talking about. When like it surprised me the first time I went flying at night and oh, flying at night, flying at night in real life because I was like, "Holy shoot, it's like a lot darker than I thought it would be." Um, again, it's nice having a fade deck in the sim. I just wish that they had a version with RPM and everything control. Well, let's let's fly a circuit, and then I'm done. Rotate our five niner. Such, I'm sorry. Whenever I take friends and family flying, I'm such a dork whenever I fly. Okay, we're going to be lifting off. I'm not sure if you saw that Instagram video of the guy just taking the 150 out and just explaining everything. He's just amazing. Like, hold, hold that circuit like you hold your lady. You got to hold up and uh, got to keep your uh, standard. Freaking... It's kind of weird how. Oh, okay. When I first uh, flew the 40 and the sim, I was like, why is the FADA giving me, like, all these weird warnings? Like, oh, yeah, 2300 is, like, the max. Because, again, I'm used to, like, the 180 slash NG version, right? So I'm not even going to bother turning the lights off. Because as soon as, you, as, the RPM, eh, budge, as, soon as the RPM reaches 2300 and nothing over, it starts flashing and it's like... You think the computer would be smart enough to not do that, but apparently not. Um, yeah, flying glass. Um, I forget what what aircraft are you learning to fly on? Is it like a 172 or something, or are you using glass as well? Because like, I started my first flights on glass with the 20. Then I flew 172s for a while. And okay, awesome. So are you using steam gauge then? Like the good old Cause like right now the 40s I I use are like this. They're glass. And they're freaking amazing. Cause like they have full autopilot and everything. So like for like cross countries and stuff, they are absolutely fantastic. Uh I'm high, but you know what? It's a healthy high because I'm high on altitude. Haha, <laughs> hey -oh. Um, Yeah, honestly, the 172 is awesome in the sense that it does not want to land because <laughs> it's a high. When I first fly, started flying the uh, 150, I got block time on to get hours. It's kind of funny because I'm like, damn, this thing does not want to land. It just want to keep, it just wants to stay in the air. This is amazing. Um... But yeah, if there's a reason why it's like the most produced aircraft ever. Like the 172 is freaking awesome to fly. I feel like it's a rite of passage as well, right? Like, oh, really, eh? Yeah, well, it makes sense, right? Because like, 
when my um I just want to see if I can actually get into a spin with this. Can't really in real life, but pull back. Oh, okay, so you can get into a sippy and spin. Okay, that's kind of cool. Yeah, you're not supposed to do a spin with a 40 in real life, but whatever. Um Yeah. I know. It's like you finally get on the ground and it's awesome. Yeah, um Obviously, like for uh, cross countries, it's like the same. You're supposed to use, even with the G1000, you bring you bring your map and like you just turn it off. Like the G1000, you set it to like one percent brightness, and it's like, okay, where are you right now? And then you just point on the map, and it's like, I'm here because I did my flight planning, and I totally know where I am. Nah, it's fun. And like the 150, they have a 152 here, right? Pretty, yeah, they have a. It's pretty much the same thing. 152. Uh, except it's a little bit fancier. Yeah, sure. Yeah, but uh, the, the Garmin, like with the synthetic vision, it's insane because you can like set up waypoints. So it's like you're flying in a video game. So, like, for, like, your ILS approach, you're, like, literally flying through rings. And it's like, oh, my gosh, I'm flying, like, Sonic or... <laughs> it's it's insane. But, um, I prefer... It sounds weird, but I prefer Steam Gauge because it's, like, if you can fly, like, a VOR, like, if you can get on a radial with that, if you can fly an IFR approach just using Steam Gauge, you can fly anything, really, you know? So, it's just, like... It's good that you're flying with the 172 and 152 because it's like you're going to be so good when you transition like to commercial license like to commercial flying because you're going to be so used to having all these older tools that when you go to the new tools it's going to be like oh i got this Yeah, so this is like generally my setup whenever I fly out of uh, Buttonville in the 150, um, which is great. Like if you, I don't think you need hours because you're close to finishing your CPL, which is freaking awesome. But um, I use flightclub.ca. It's like that Canadian website where it's like owners can rent you their plane but not make money. So it's legal. So it's like you can buy block time on a 150 for like 80 bucks an hour dry. So obviously you're paying for fuel, which Buttonville, it's like the most expensive gas around. So it sucks. But like, it's awesome. Like <laughs> buying 20 hours and like, I think I'm at like 110 right now. Like 75 more? Or like. Or like total. Because you, you're a Canadian pilot, right? So like. Okay, cool. Yeah, um. Like, are you, you, are you, sorry, I'm not even focusing on flying. I'm just reading the text now. This is why you don't text and fly. So, like, are you a Canadian pilot again? I'm pretty sure you were, right? Or are you an American pilot? Because, like, right now, I know I'm at 110 hours. And in Canada, you need, like, your 200 hours minimal. Oh, yeah, sorry, I remember New Zealand. It's different. Um, yeah, sorry, I remember our conversation from before. Yeah, that's, that's awesome. Yeah, it's weird. In Canada, how it works is for your cpl you need 200 hours in total a hundred of that need, why is the sim being weird i don't know i'm sorry if you have epilepsy do not watch this part um okay yeah that that makes sense yeah what the heck is going on why is this plane haunted we're doing external now <laughs> i don't want to get a haunted plane yeah in canada it's weird because you need a hundred hours solo 
out of those 200 hours. You need at least 20 hours cross country, which I pretty much have in the bag too. Um, believe it or not, you don't need your night rating to be a commercial pilot. It's just that it's kind of common sense because if you can't fly at night, then you can really just tow banners and bring parachuters up. Um, so to get my commercial, Oh, okay, yeah. Because um, for PPL, I think it's 40... In Canada, I think it's minimum 44 hours to get your PPL. Um, I think it's 10 solo. Yeah, it's weird how other countries do things. Because I know in America, I think in the U.S., they have their night rating with their private license. I think it just comes with it. But they have more, like, stringent requirements. So, like, they actually have to have, like... Um, five hour night cross country, five hour instrument cross country. Like, again, I don't, I know what KO stuff and not American stuff. Um, which, yay, Commonwealth countries. Woo, go team. But yeah, like, it's insane. By the way, you're in New Zealand. Like, aren't you supposed to be in bed by now? Like, isn't it, like, late at night? <laughs> like, it's always weird because like, oh no, it's it's in the in, it's in the morning because it's five, six p.m. here, so it would be like okay, yeah, so it's like starting your day, I think. I don't know. Yeah, okay. Good morning. <laughs> I'm sorry for like giving you a laser light show here. I don't know what's going on. I will pretend to know what I'm doing with landing. Just kidding. I should actually probably pay attention now. Um, but yeah, that's freaking... Like, I wish you the best of luck. Like, I know it's been a hot minute, but like, man, it's crazy how time flies. Pardon the aviation pun. Like, um... So, yeah. So that means, like you said, you're fairly close because you need 75 and 75. I know, like, for me... This isn't even like a flying stream anymore. This is just me being a dork, playing around with the Cessna. Actually, I wonder if it can slip wall. One sec. Here I am trying to use my mouse to... Oh yeah, if you get like a good slip going for a Cessna, oh. Yeah, that's the only thing with flying a diamond is that they don't slip for anyone because they're so like aerodynamic. They're so hard to slip. Yeah, and now you're going to be almost done, and here I am tr still twiddling my fingers. Waiting for good weather to freaking fly again. Yeah, that threw me off, because, like, I was like, oh, yeah, I want to get flying again. But, like, the weather's been horrible lately. And then you're like, yeah, I, I agree. And I'm like, wait, are you from Ontario? I can't remember. <laughs> Sorry. He's like, I have a few friends that are um, out of Burlington and whatnot. So, like, not New Zealand, but, like, here in Ontario, Canada. So, like, I'm sorry, I get confused with some of my friends sometimes, because I'm... But at the same time, that's the cool thing about aviation, is that it's such a well-connected community as well. It's so, like, when you get your commercial license, it's going to be like, oh, I... <laughs> man, oh, man. Yeah, man, oh, man. One second. There we go. Beautiful. Well, I am going to go pretend to do some work now. Um, With that being said, Physics, I'm really happy your flight training is going well. Like, again, it's been a hot minute. Hopefully we can hang out or whatever soon IRL I'm just kidding no um no honestly I'm really happy that flight training is going well for you and like honestly it's kind of the perfect time to finish too as things kind of start to ramp up again because as soon as aviation starts to hire people back honestly like the pilot shortage is just getting worse right because so many people have 
retired at this point. So let, whether it's let to let new uh, pilots in, um, the whole nine yards. So it's it's really interesting to see what's going to happen in the uh, next uh, several years, let alone let alone a single year, you know. But yeah, again, like I'm not surprised if somehow our paths cross in real life. It's just like just flying is like, oh hey, how's it going? <laughs> That's the best part about aviation, is that it doesn't matter where you fly. Everyone knows what a stall is. Everyone knows what this is, etc. So, yeah. No, I, honestly, I, I'm freaking excited for you. Like, I'm I'm excited to hear what goes on. But, yeah, I definitely have to stay in touch because... <laughs> I don't know, do you? Do you secretly stalk me? I'm just kidding. It's freaking awesome. Like, in, e e even if we don't, it's just like, yeah, cool. It's 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 such a small world. That's what travel's for. Just take my flight benefits and hang out in New Zealand for a while. It's... All right. I actually have to go. So I <laughs> I remember that voice. Yes. Over the radio. It's just going to be like, um, our kind of had a three, four. Well, you don't have an American accent, obviously, but it's going to be like, <laughs> no, it's so bad especially with like night rating i don't know because like i kind of just did this on a whim because i feel bad because like i haven't really done a lot of youtube lately because i've been kind of busy flying and trying to make money irl but hopefully this becomes more of a thing and if you or anyone else wants to fly in a sim, or if there's any other games we can get going with people, that'd be kind of cool. Because we'll definitely have to get stuff rocking and rolling here. Also, I don't know why, but this never updates. Like, I, yeah, okay. Achievements fill her up. You, can, you know, when you have a Canadian keyboard, when it says French to go back. A shop, a shop, eh? All right, anyways, I'm heading out. You have an awesome day because it's morning. Haha, <laughs> I, I remembered. <laughs> uh, anyways, yeah, I'll talk to you later. Stay safe. Happy landings. And get some good flights in. I'm, I'm excited to hear about your uh, graduation getting... Do, do they do the graduation thing where it's like they throw water on you? Or is that... I know that's like mostly for like a first solo thing, but there has to be something when you uh, finally get your CPL. I don't know. Hopefully we're both done soon and we'll just be flying. Honestly, by the time we graduate, they'll probably have like an Galactic, Virgin Galactic will have their flights from, I don't know, New Zealand, from Wellington to Hamilton. I don't know. Uh, okay, I'm actually going to head out now. You have an awesome day, Conser, and uh, <laughs> shake hands. Air shake hands. There we go. As we say in Canada, peace out. Okay. <laughs> See you later. <laughs>